Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Concrete Podcast. Today we have two guests, Dolce Brito and Jessica Bell, who are here to talk about a lawsuit filed on behalf of 14 inmates at a Florida prison, which accuses the male staff and correctional officers at the prison of sexual assault and rape over a number of years. Dolce and Jess claim to know the women in this lawsuit personally, and what's interesting is they're not backing up these women's claims, but instead they're defending the male prison staff and the Bureau of Prisons. So this podcast is loaded with mind-blowing stories. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you do too. Enjoy the show. Hello, ladies. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for coming out here and doing this today. Uh, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Tell me a little bit about your what your name is and uh, just give us a little introduction to who you are. So um, I'm Jesse, and uh, I live in Mayaca City, and um, uh, I just got out of prison about like nine months ago. Uh, I went to prison for conspiracy to distribute meth. It's like 18 pounds altogether, like in the case. Wow. Um, I work at a dairy now. Yeah. Waiting to go to school in August for marine mechanics. Very cool. How about yourself? My name is Dulce. I live in Zephyr Hills, Florida. I went to prison for trafficking methamphetamine across the Mexican border. Um, I was in there for three years at Coleman. And now I'm a server at Fresh Country Cafe. Okay, cool. How did you guys know each other? Prison. Yeah. Oh, you guys met in Mm -hmm. prison. And what prison did you guys go to? Coleman. Coleman, wow. That's like one of the biggest prisons in the country, isn't it? It is. It's like three square miles, like a little over 2,200 acres. Mm. That's wild. Yeah. Now, um, I know one of the main reasons that you guys are in here today is to talk about um, an article that came out in the Miami Herald that you guys are both very familiar with, right? Yes. Um, The title of the article is rape is rampant at this women's prison anyone who complains is punished the lawsuit says and this article was published on december 4th 2019 uh and what's really interesting about this article basically the premise of the article is there's a bunch of female inmates at coleman that are accusing correctional officers of rape is that right right and so there's a group of women so which makes it a class action lawsuit that are suing the the bureau of prisons is Mm -hmm. that am i right right okay um and what's interesting is that you girls Mm -hmm. are here not to jump on the bandwagon accusing the correctional officers of rape what's extremely interesting is that you guys are here to to defend the correctional officers and the bureau of prisons from what seems to be a conspiracy by these female inmates to set up the prison guards right Basically, yeah, kind of, yeah. That's why you, that's what you guys are doing, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, why are you guys doing that? Can you expand on that a little bit? Like, I know a lot of the girls. A little bit, a little bit closer. I know a lot of the girls, like, in the lawsuit, and they personally, okay, when, I don't know if you guys heard about the lawsuit of the, that the female officers did against the Bureau Prisons. You're talking about 2017 when there was over 500 female officers Right. That did a lawsuit. They filed a lawsuit mm-hmm. basically saying that the male inmates were harassing them, yes. right? Well, when that thing happened and everybody like caught wind of it, like they wanted to do the same thing. They're like, well, if the officers can do it, like why can't the inmates? Right. So like. And I that they got awarded over $20 million, right? right. Yeah. Between them. Who, the Which women officers? That's insane. The women officers, yeah. And it was like a big thing. Like they made, uh, in welding, they made like a, like a, like an arm, armor thingy that they were going to put the women officers in when they did count, but they didn't do it, but they changed our pants and everything. So when that happened, the girls want to do the same thing. They're like, oh, like if they can do it, why can't we sue? And then a lot of them, they want revenge on the system because they're mad that they're in prison. Yeah. So like their their type of revenge is getting the people that are watching us in prison. Or it's like a personal vendetta against them. Like because they got fired. From their so they want like revenge because they got fired off a job. So how many women are in this current lawsuit? There's 14. <clears throat> 14 women mm-hmm. who are banding together to sue the Bureau of Prisons. Yes. yes. Okay. And did you guys personally meet any of those women? I think I know like 12 or 13 out of all 14. No, all of really? them. Really? Yeah. 
Except for one. One name I don't recognize in the lawsuit. No, but if I probably saw a picture of her, like, I probably would know her. But I don't know off name. The last one. And how well do you know those girls? I was really close with, I want to say three of them. Mm -hmm. About three of them. Yeah. But we worked with um, a lot of them, like, every day. It's tiny. There's only, like, 400 girls in the prison. So everybody oh, really? knows everybody. Everybody knows your business. Okay. How long were you guys locked up for? Um, four years. Four. I did tw 30, uh, 20, 30, three months. 33 30 months. months. Okay. Why are you guys here, <clears throat> here to defend the prisoner, the prison guards? Why defend them? Were they, Cause was, like, there, was there something you saw in there that made you feel like this is, it's wrong that they're doing this? Well, I know it's wrong because their reasons are wrong. Like, if you were raped, you were raped. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's something that would be would have been different. But, like, these girls should have came up to me and told me that this was what they were going to do. And they were doing it for either time cut or they wanted, like, a boyfriend or something to get time cut. Or they just wanted revenge. And it's or wrong. Money. Like, they used to come up to me and brag about it. So you're bragging about it and you know you're doing it. Some of them are even in relationships with the officers. But now you want to claim rape. Really? When there's money involved. When you say they're in relationships with the officers, what do you mean by that? Like relationships. Like, like genuine relationships. Yeah. Like, like they want to be together after prison. Mm -hmm. Really? Well, want it to be because I don't think they do anymore. And these girls literally told you while you, while you were in there that they would want to set up, or they, that they would eventually want to set up the prison correctional officers? Or? Yeah. No, they told me they were going to. When I was leaving, they told me they were going to do it. That they wanted to take them down basically because they were mad that one of them that were in lawsuit amanda she was mad that she was being harassed she uh said because uh de camilla he was like investigating it so he was like follow her around because she was like involved in everything so she said she was feeling harassed so she was gonna sue him for harassment she so said what that she was feeling harassed by him because he was the investigation person that investigated everything so if you feel harassed and he's trying to get you to talk to him and you don't want to talk to him why talk to him later on like if all that was happening Right. And like when he will follow us around is because like we would drop her off to these officers and she was OK with it. Or we were meeting up somebody to like get pastries. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> and she was OK with it. But now like she got mad and now it's rape. Right. So now she's saying she got raped and it's a big lawsuit. Yeah. Now, some of the girls in the lawsuit say that they were like cornered. They were but cornered uh, in in. Cafeteria? In the cafeteria? No, yeah. No, the cafeteria is way too open to be cornered. <clears throat> Maybe in the back, but... A few of them said that they would, like, work late. Like, some of the officers would make them work late so they could corner them when nobody was around. Or they were, like, forced into the woods. Or, like, some of them said they had to, like, suntan naked in front of the <laughs> correctional officers. Oh, that is true, but it's it didn't happen like that. Nobody was forced. forced nobody yeah. was coerced. Nobody was threatened. Nobody's family was threatened. Like, these women 100% wanted to go in the woods or... <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And or you think they're all, they're all lying? I don't, I don't think that, I know the majority of them are lying. A majority of them are, not all of them. Right, maybe there's a couple. <laughs> Just that a are few, yeah. But it is, it is fully illegal <clears throat> for the correctional officers to have any sort of like sexual relationship with an inmate. Right, yeah. so there's this thing that they passed in 2003, a law called PREA, and PREA stands for Prison Rape Elimination Act. So it basically states, it's like zero tolerance uh, for any kind of sexual misconduct. So anything from a verbal comment to actually having sex is considered rape, whether it's consensual or not. Right. Starts. Right. So technically, it's a perfectly legit lawsuit because it was rape. Yeah, but they weren't cornered. It is, but or morally? Or like they weren't threatened. I think morally <clears throat> it's not. Morally it's not rape? N n I think that what the women are doing is, is it's not right. I think that maybe they... You think they're exploiting the system or exploiting the laws or the rules? Right, exactly. Why? Because they can say anything from just like being talked to, harassed, or something falls into that whole right. that whole category. Yes. Yeah. Whether it's consensual or not, like right. it's rape. These guys are hit. Like <laughs> they're going down. Now what? Now what's happening to these girls, or what's going to happen to them now that they've? filed that lawsuit now that they're all going against the prison guards and they're going against the prison are they going to get sent to like another facility are they going to be suffer the consequences of doing that or what do you think's happening to them right now some of them are home and some of them got shipped so a lot of them are not 
at Coleman anymore. But some uh, of them are still there because I know there was an agreement when all this first started coming out that um, that the girls wouldn't be shipped. Yeah. So they would talk, talk about it. But before that, yeah, like you just got shipped. Like if they sent you somewhere else. Yeah. If there was an investigation and it didn't go anywhere, like they shipped you so it didn't show their negligence. What would you say the biggest misconception in a woman's prison is? What's the biggest misunderstanding of a woman's prison? Being a, pr a, wo a female prisoner in a big federal prison like that. I feel like where we were at, at least, it's not like a prison. I feel like I was at like college. Girls gone wild. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? College for criminals. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't feel like I was in prison. So it's like the things that happened there, you don't, you wouldn't expect <laughs> you would to happen. You wouldn't imagine. Like what? The whole sunbathing, like we did do that. Yeah. The officers were not around when I did it, at least. And then there's times where, like, we would just drive around all day, listen to music. Uh, drive around in what? In, in, in the vehicles. On like, the prison? Yeah, yeah, like, they gave us keys to cars. And, and you could drive around on the prison property? On the property? compound, yes. Yeah. Because the camp is not, like, it's it's not like a prison at all. There's no fence. No, you're like, not fenced it, in. It's nothing to see female prisoners walking around, like, doing their job. Really? Yeah. yeah. So we should, like, drive around. So girls would just walk around, tan, topless, driving cars. Wait, not in, like... <laughs> bumping music. <laughs> not, like, the camp. It's, like, the camp. So, like, when you're on the camp, <clears throat> no, because, like, they're watching you on the cameras. Yeah. But if you worked, like, outside, like, on landscaping, or you worked in facility or something, and you were, or plumbing, and you can have a vehicle, that's what they would do. Hmm. Like, I know a time, one time it was raining, and we were super bored, and we took, like, the gator, and uh, we <laughs> tied the... A rope to the back of it and we got a trash can top and we just went mudding and one of us sat on the top and we just, and just pulled them behind, yeah, pulled them behind it <laughs> that's yeah. sick and yeah. we just had like we just did things like that like fun yeah things like that definitely went mudding all the time yeah is it is it like that on the the male side of the camp no they're locked all? down well see the thing is like the whole rape thing you're only hearing about it with the prisons but like my baby daddy he's in prison at your baby daddy is? Yeah, at the low. And the same thing happens there, but you don't really hear about it. The same thing with the male officers and the, I mean, the male inmates and the female officers. And you don't hear about it. They have consensual relationships? <clears throat> yeah. And they sleep with each other. Like, he just told me the other day that a female was uh, escorted off the compound. Because, a correction officer? Yeah. Because she got caught with an inmate. But, like, nobody hears about that part. You only hear about what's happening at the camp. What happens to that officer? Like, when they get suspended. And I think that's it. Like, all the officers that are listed in the lawsuit, like, they, they've only been, like, suspended or uh, forced to retire, early retirement. Yeah. Or they get transferred to another prison to work. Yeah, I don't think that people work that work in the prison system are, like, the cream of the crop. When They're it, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Because you think, I mean, people that don't make it as cops, not the most, it doesn't take a very ambitious person to work in the prison system it seems no. like a very depressing place to want to work right because they're in prison too so yeah right and if you see a lot of the officers like a lot of them are retarded it's like their cousins <laughs> or their GED. i'm being serious a lot yeah. of them are retarded and then if you look because we used to mow the penitentiaries and we will mow the medium and the low so if you look mm. at the officers that they put in those prisons compared to what we had like it's a big difference and what in what prisons at the penitentiary of the medium or the low. Okay. Yeah. The officers, the officers there are totally different from what we had. We had like the, the tiny, nerdy guys. <laughs> Why all the guys with muscles and tattoos were at the penitentiary. Right. They're working like, at the Like they kind of knew that. They're not going to make it over at the penitentiary. Not only right? that, not going to make it. They would never make it. But it was like, if they put, they know if they put a good looking officer at the camp, that's what's going to happen. They're going to get, get like jumped by yeah, the female. Exactly. I remember one time. Uh, we got our TVs taken away for a whole week because we had it. He wasn't even cute. But they got from the training center. I do remember. Um, because the girls were catcalling him. So we got TVs <laughs> taken away. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, for like a whole week. But it's funny. It, it, it's not, I wouldn't say funny is the right word. But the in the, two, the 2017 lawsuit where there's 524 women suing the Bureau of Prisons, they were saying that the women were walking... They were ha they would have to walk down the hallway and watch like dozens yeah. of dudes jerking off. Yeah, right. Which is why we had to change our pants yep. with no. We they took our pants with pockets and gave us pants without pockets, which makes it easier, in my opinion. 
<laughs> it does. Because they were... With they gave the girls pants without everybody, pockets? Everybody, the whole complex. What does that do? Um, so that you can't... Because they said that guys were putting their hands in their pockets. They cut the, the pockets and they put their hands in their pockets and then they... they would stick oh, their, they right. would stick their wieners through the, the pocket it. hole and then beat off when the... Yeah, exactly. Officers. But so the no pockets, like you don't have a button or anything. Right. So it's easier to put Spandex. your pants in there. But like, see, like, it's weird because like... The female officers soon, but when we go mowing, they do that. They stand at the windows while we're on our mowers, and they're just they hold up signs seriously, swear, or with their inmate numbers telling you to write them. Yeah, <laughs> or they got their junk out and oh my, like gosh. Waving it. yeah. We had a guy named Old Faithful. <laughs> 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 every time we mowed, he was right there yeah. waiting for us at that table, same table every day. Why did you guys call him Old Faithful? Because he was there every day. <laughs> every time and he go was there to mow, what no would he do? Day, just sit there and watch us and. Jack off. And just jack off. And would you guys ever like report it or say anything? Or no, you just, to me it's there? funny. It's, it's probably funny. entertaining for you guys, yeah. right? It is. But it's like funny to me, but like, I mean, other people would probably complain about it. So like, I feel like if they're going to sue, like sue over that because that's like for real. But like the whole rape thingy, I don't believe it was rape. And I saw another story of a woman who was actually knocked up by a prison guard. Yeah, she was at Coleman. Do you know that lady? No. Mm-hmm. She she got shit before we got there. Oh, okay. Do you think that that was a <laughs> consensual? I mean, yeah, they're in a relationship now. They still are in a yeah, relationship. And her the got the officer's wife works at Coleman, and she hates the females. Wow. Uh, Miss Torres. Yeah. She hates the females, so she's not allowed to work with us because <laughs> she's mean. That's crazy. <laughs> Did you guys ever think? I mean, when you got, what, what was your first reaction when you first saw that come out? That article. Did you guys? I laughed. I, I, I just—it's crazy. Yeah. Did you know it was like that before you guys went there? No, no. I remember the day that I went in, and I was in uh, R and D. Yeah. The male officer told me that it was like a college, and I, I was like, "He's like, don't worry, it's not scary. It's like a college." You couldn't tell me that kind of stuff happened when I first got there, but the first day I had somebody come up to me, and they're like. Oh, we see me so and so. It was her boss, and she's like, "We're we're sleeping together." And I'm like, <laughs> "What?" There was another inmate that said yes. that. So it's just like a common thing. Yes. Yeah. It's just like a like a college dorm for the for inmates the f- and correctional <laughs> officers just humping everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> for the 14 women, I guarantee you that are on the lawsuit, there's another 28 or that are not more in Bob like, that have had sexual relations yeah. with yes. officers and mm-hmm. stuff. Because I know a lot that are not in the lawsuit. Which, like, I find that that's okay because they, and they got caught and they got in trouble and they, some of them got shipped, some of them went to county, but they're not in the lawsuit. Why don't you think some of them are in the lawsuit? Why do you think some, do you think Because they, they know it's not, not rape. Yeah, they chose, you chose if you wanted to be there or not. And they, I felt like they knew it wasn't rape, so yeah, they don't want no part of it. You would think, though, it's got to be hard if you're in there and there's all these other girls doing it like, hey, we're going to get all this, we're going to get millions to not just join them. Be like, okay, I'll, <clears> I'll. I'll join in on the lawsuit if I'm if I get a piece of it. What's a hundred grand? Screw it. You know what I mean? It's hard to say that. I don't know. Maybe their morals are are higher than that. But exactly. Is that what it, is I, that the case? I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Or some of them just don't want it out there. Like they'll they take don't. it to their grave. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see that. So what is the like the Bureau of Prisons doing to f- fight against it? What are, I don't are they they're doing they're anything. Just, I think everything is the same right now. I think that um, <laughs> they really can't. Yeah. Like, with yeah, because it's hard. There's not really, it's right regardless. If there's a, if enough girls come come out and say that they had sexual relations with these guys, at some point, it's like whether it was consensual or not, it's against the rules, yeah, and they're exactly. gonna have to pay. They're and there's no point. Out. There's no way to prove it now because like the ones, the officers that were involved in a lawsuit, kind of were sleeping with inmates. Yeah. So it's easy. Like if I was sleeping with an officer, and I wanted to sue, I slept with him, so I know what everything looks like. So oh, I could right. tell her what it looked like. So it's easier for her to say. You mean like what his junk looked like? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So it's easier for her to s- describe it when the investigation comes. Because half those girls I know really didn't have sex with them. But it's easier because there's a lot of officers that are not involved that did have sex with inmates. That they're throwing them under the bus either way. No, there's some that are not in, that did have sex with them and they're and not listed. They're not listed. Oh, really? Yes. And it's harder to prove because not everybody talks about them. So you can't say that the officer from Unicorn. You can't really describe it if nobody tells you what it looks like. But he was sleeping with people. So it's Is like, that like a main question they ask? Like Yeah. They to do, identify yeah. Yes. the guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you claim rape, you got to tell them how it looks like. Or they try to get you to set them up. Get it oh, like, yeah. Yeah. 
Did anything mm-hmm. like that happen when you guys were locked up? Yeah. Who was it? It was leaving um, R&D on their way out. And she agreed to uh, set one of the officers up. And she, she actually got a semen sample on her shirt or something. She saved it, and he was hit. What do you think these girls, I mean, have you guys been speaking, like, out against this publicly at all before this? No, see, or? I posted on Facebook, and a lot of them deleted me. They did. <laughs> because I so called them liars. Know. Yeah, I, I said they were liars, and they didn't like it, they can delete me. So they yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, they definitely are taking advantage of the laws. You know, whether it was consensual or not, there's no way that they're not going to win, or they're not going to get a settlement. Oh, they're definitely going to win. They're definitely going to get a settlement, right? Right. Um, but I don't see how it's going to change anything in the prison system. I don't see that. I don't see, do you guys see any way that the prison system will ever change in the near future or even down the road? I don't because when the female officer sued, nothing changed. They changed our pants and that was it. (laughs) That was it. So the no pockets? Yeah, Yeah, no no pockets and it did nothing. They still do it. You were arrested for possession or trafficking of meth, right? And yours was distribution distribution Mm -hmm. you you crossed the mexican border with it from mexico Mexico. to here Mm -hmm. with how much with 15 kilos just you or no me and my best friend were you living in mexico at the time no living in vegas you just went down there picked it up and were bringing it back pretty much how how do you get caught (laughs) how how did that whole how did that situation become like i had a, a friend that she was involved with it and then she told me and i was young i was like well i'm still young but i was younger and How old were you at the time? 19. Okay. And I thought that it would be a great idea because, like, they were just flashing around money and they were promising all these <coughs> things, like nice cars and houses and a lot of money. Like, it was a lot of money. Right. They paid you. How much? When you brought it over, right? Yeah. How much did you get paid? Uh, <coughs> so you get 15000 It's not that much, but. It's a nice lick. Yeah. yeah I mean, for nice just to cross change, it. For sure. But then on top of that, they're they're just giving you money, like, every single day. Like, thousands of dollars who's actually giving you the money the people like, car- <laughs> like the cartel the or basically the yeah, people that were sure. organizing all of it were giving you money like they paid off my bank account because i was like overdrafted they gave me money to go shopping they gave me money to get um things in mexico like they paid for the car everything right they want to keep you happy so you'll yeah keep like they'll pay for your rent across. they'll buy you cars they'll do whatever you want whatever you want and this was a regular thing you were crossing the border bringing in no i only went twice oh okay and you got, got busted the second time the second yeah. time yeah tell them how you got caught yeah how were you transporting it mm-hmm. like how in were you car? hiding it they have um i forgot what they call it but they call it something and they like basically like build a compartment inside the car mm-hmm. and uh they hide it in there okay. so when we got caught like i probably would have never even went to prison but the border was closed and i didn't like it was my second time like i don't know what to do when the border's closed yeah so i see everybody going one way so i went that same way well that way is like a sentry lane and you need a special pass to go in that lane and i didn't know that so when you go in that lane and you don't have the pass you automatically have to go to secondary inspection oh no so that's how we got caught like secondary we had to go to the x-ray and then the x-ray didn't see anything inside the car so then they're doing the, they're asking us questions and everything. They're checking the car. They brought the canine. The canine didn't smell anything in the car. Well, they knew it because one of the density levels in the seats were different. One was like 13, another one was like higher. So they knew since the density levels were higher on one side, there was something in it. So they had like shred the car in pieces and they like got it. And then, of course, we were arrested. Wow. So you're arrested at the board. Then where do they take you from there? Immigration. To immigration? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And so how long are you there for? I was there for a day, but it was like worse ever because you're in a room with kids that have lice. <laughs> and with was, kids? Yeah. Like was, how old kids? Like <laughs> kids. All the kids from immigration were there. Like there were babies there. And the way the immigration was set up, like you're sleeping on the floor. Mm-hmm. You, kids and all. What? And they have like diapers and bottles and everything that you need here. They feed you cold food. It was horrible. And I was only there for a couple hours and it was horrible. And There's me, literal babies in there. Babies in immigration. And how are they taking care of the babies? With the things that the people... Are their parents there? Yeah. Okay. They're there with their parents. Oh, okay. Either waiting for paperwork or waiting to get deported, but they're there with their parents. But they have lice, and it was kind of creepy <laughs> because you're passing through the rooms, and there's literally one room set up where the mom and the kids, and the mom's brushing the lice out their kid, their hair. Mm. It's, like, bad. And then they feed you, like, bricks. Bricks. And it's like, uh, <laughs> it's tortilla and it's cold and it's cold eggs and it's cold potatoes and you got a certain amount of time to eat it. 
And then the marshals came and got us and took us to the airport, which was probably the most embarrassing thing ever. And then... Why was it embarrassing? Because you're going to the airport. With and people. they walk you through with cuffs and, they, and everything. Yeah, and they're walking you through. So everybody knows, like, you just got arrested. And uh, they took us to MCC, which is a prison in California. And then... State prison? No, it's a federal holding mm-hmm. detention. And there. then they ship you to Florida? No, we got out on bond. Oh. And then we were out for like a year or two. And then we got sentenced. And then what, you took it to trial? or No, I did not take a trial. No, you just took Everybody a told me not to take a trial because you automatically get the max. Yeah, if when you lose. Yeah. Yeah. No, like they'll find something to put on oh, you. Oh, they'll, they'll like figure it out. Even if you didn't get arrested for that, they're finding something yeah. to get you with. Yeah, because so, there's no way that they could the there's no way that they could afford to take cases let you to go. trial. So they just yeah. they just kind of like lie and stack yeah. stuff to make it to where you have no choice but to take a plea. Yeah, because we were gonna take a trial first yeah. because the car wasn't under my name. Like, how can you how can you prove that I knew it was in there? Right. So I was gonna take a trial, but Rick told me not to. So I just took the plea agreement. And the plea was for what? What'd you say? Two years or <coughs> the plea or? was actually or for a year and a day. Okay. And they gave me three years. And then shipped you to Coleman? No, I moved to Florida because my family was here because I was pregnant. And then uh, they let me have the baby, and then I had a self-surrender at Coleman. And wow. that's where you did the remainder of your time yeah. at? Mm-hmm. And how about you? What? What was your, how did you, what was your story of how you got arrested um, or got busted? Really, I was just, I was kind of brought up around. A little bit, a little bit closer. Brought up around, um drugs most of my life so it was just kind of like normal for me to to get some and sell it and make some money and in florida yeah oh okay yeah yeah so were you like cooking meth or what (laughs) no i never (laughs) never cooked meth um no we had this guy that we got it from uh his name was wild man (laughs) um (laughs) wild man yeah yeah okay and you just you just distributed it yeah and how did you get caught distributing it? Um, I guess the uh, the county that we were in had been trying to get um, this guy Wildman for a while, and they couldn't for some reason or the other. So they brought in um, DEA, and the feds eventually got involved. Mm-hmm. And yeah, how long were you? And how long were you um, in prison for? Uh, four years, almost four years. Almost four years. Mm-hmm. Yours almost doesn't even seem as bad as as hers, and you got more time. Right. How did that? How did that happen? I don't know how it works. I know that they they look at your stuff and and they decide and look at your priors oh, decide okay. differently for everybody. Really? And conspiracies more. <clears throat> and like conspiracies, like I think automatically five years, and then like the judge was kind of like lenient because it's common to see young girls get pulled over in Mexico. Yeah, because the young because uh, I could say I could see how someone like yourself like trafficking something or like driving a car full of meth, you're not really a high level target in yeah. like the whole operation. You're just kind of like a pawn. You're just like, yeah. here's some cash. Do this for us. Yeah. Like, we they want to catch like, the we big were guys. Like, yeah. So they were basically saying that we were like, like young and naive and we were just like the tiny people that they use basically to like get what they wanted. Right. But I'm just like, I'm lucky that we had what we had and not something different because you don't know what you're bringing in the car back. Like you could be oh, bringing, so you don't even know what you have. No, you, you could be bringing like guns. You could be bring bringing it. money. You could be bringing anything. You don't know. You just go down there with a car, and they take it from you. They load it up and they bring it back, and then you just gotta drive it back. You don't even know where it's at. So they, <laughs> what are the instructions? Like that, is, basically. This guy just says go to this address. They say go to Mexico, go to the first gas station you see, buy a track phone. Then you do that, and then you call him, and then he says okay, and then go to this place. Someone's gonna be waiting for you. So we do that. Then they say get in this taxi, which is kind of like, now that I think about it, like I probably could have died. They probably yeah. could have killed me. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then we meet this some other guy and they take us to a hotel and then we leave the car at the bottom with the keys inside and they pick up the car and then they bring the car back. And then the next day we got to get the car washed and we got to go shopping to make it look like we did something in Mexico and then we leave and that's it. Sounds like an episode of that Locked Up Abroad show. <laughs> yeah. It's like all or Breaking Bad. <laughs> right. That's pretty much. And mm-hmm. then, like, they were already waiting for us at the border because somebody snitched us out because she got caught first. And so you were with one other girl? I was with my best friend, but okay. we didn't know that they sent two of us at the same time. Mm. Like, two vehicles. So they sent two vehicles at the same time, same hotel, same everything. Well, she got caught first. Crossing the border? Cr- crossing the border. Mm-hmm. And she knew what car we were in. So she snitched us out. 
Oh no. Yeah. Your so best they were really friend. No, she was oh. in the car with me. Oh, okay. The other yeah, car the other, snitched yeah. you. Out. So well, they knew. Like I feel like even if I wasn't in secondary, I mean in that lane, I yeah, probably would have got caught. They probably would have found you. Yeah. What happened to your best friend? Did she get the same time yeah. you did? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, when you guys got out of prison, like, was there any kind of special, any any kind of like special treatment or any kind of like structure set up for you guys to like? build a new life once you guys got out like like jobs or any kind of income or any kind of housing or what was there when you guys finally got released like what did you guys have to do do you mean like through the bop yeah like through the st through the bop through like the system did they help you guys get back on your feet in any way or give you guys any sort of like guidance like or? you go to the halfway house and that's basically to help you get back on your feet um yeah. you have to get a job and yeah, but it, I don't think I don't really think it helps us. We got paid right, like a lot of our check to stay there, which I rather not even stay there. Mm -hmm. Um, you got to eat their food if you don't like it. You got to buy something different. They don't help you find jobs. There's they no just, resources at all, no. like through them. They just give you a piece of paper that tells you where <coughs> who's hiring, and then you got to go apply. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think they give you bus passes if you don't have a car. I think the first time, the very first time, you get a bus pass, but and after then that, after like, that, you got to figure it out. Yeah. And that's it. And then they give you like a voucher to shop at Goodwill <laughs> the very first time. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's it. That's crazy. It's almost like they want people to get sucked back into the system. That's kind of how I feel like. Even prison, even Coleman I can itself, definitely see that. Like we've had uh, our unit manager, she used to tell us it was a job security. Like for her. Right. To get, like she wants, get them just coming back. She wants in. you to come back. Yeah. Really? Yeah. She used to say that all the time. And she like, they don't help you at Coleman either. The counselors don't help you. The case managers don't help you. I feel like they just don't care. There's so many of us, though, like, and they're understaffed, and they they don't care. They just push your paperwork and get you out. They just kind of show up. They yeah. just show up and barely. do their job. They barely <laughs> show and up. When they do show up, they hide from you. They don't want <laughs> to talk to you. They barely do open house. Uh, yeah. They don't want to That's help. sad. Really is sad. It's a fucked up system. It is sad because it's, it's super hard to get back out and yeah. on your feet and... Like, that is the reason why a lot of people go back is you don't have the resources. You don't have the help that you need. Right. And would you say most of the girls that were in there with you guys in there for drugs? Yeah, or fraud. Drugs or fraud? Yeah. If there were any young girls out there who were getting busted for anything, whether it be drug trafficking or, or whatever, they're about to go spend a lot of time in prison, what advice would you give them? Think about your consequences. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, before you before you <clears throat> do it, if you're going to take drugs across the border or just don't get arrested, <laughs> don't go to prison. Well, what about, like, if they're about, if they have no choice, they're already busted, they're going to prison, they're going to do, they're going to, they got I would say don't go to Coleman. They got, <laughs> <laughs> don't go to Coleman. I'm serious. You got, like, if, you I got, didn't, if I didn't have kids, I probably wouldn't have learned my lesson because it's not, like, a real prison. So the reason why I learned my lesson is because I have kids. So I was away from them. So it was hard. But if I didn't have kids, I wouldn't have mind being there because I had fun. Right. Sometimes. Right. And being in there didn't really. It didn't like. Like doesn't want discipline to make you. you change. No. When you get It's out. like a game. And you meet like some really good people, but really nobody's your friend. Yeah. Nobody's your friend. Well. Well, well you, you guys made friends, right? You had, yeah. you had a baby daddy too, though, right? Wasn't that hard? Not, yeah. not seeing him? Because I mean, a lot of people say that when they go in there and they have like a, a wife or a girlfriend that they will like cut it off beforehand because they know that just like the the pain of not being able to see them or like being jealous of them, like cheating on them is too much. So yeah. they just end it before they go in. Yeah. Well, the guy that I was talking about earlier, he, I wasn't with him when we were in. Okay. Um, when I was in Coleman. Okay. Yeah. But, but that still, is, it's true. Um, it just makes your time easier. You're not worried about what they're doing. You don't have to worry about if they don't answer the phone. Like, mm -hmm. and you only get 300 minutes a month. <laughs> So if you like, if you're worried about a boyfriend, like your are gone in one day, you're done. <laughs> and you're and then, done. Yeah, for the whole month. The next 30, uh, 29 days, you're just like, mm. right. You're just waiting to talk to yeah. them and wonder what they're doing. And how many kids did you have? I had two. You had two. Did you mm -hmm. see? Did you they visit you at all when mm -hmm. you were in? Oh, okay. Yeah, they have children day and stuff like that. Oh, really? For the kids, yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. Was there any bad times in there for you guys, like with the prison guards? Did they ever try to? pursue yeah. relationships with you or our guys or have sex no. with there was anything. never any kind of forceful like situations where no. you guys felt kind of like vulnerable 
No, I don't think so. Really? No, so they've been you because they, they put all the nerdy prison guards in there, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is, is that what you said earlier? Yeah. And these Pretty guards, much. they basically know like which females they can mess with or not, like because yeah. right. they're. But I feel like they try it. sometimes. Like I've had an officer try to hold my hand, but I'm like, no, and that's it. So I don't right. feel like that's why I don't feel like it's force because it's right. the same officer that was in there. All right. They put just the scrawny little nerds like me and him in there as prison guards. <laughs> and all the jacks gorillas with tattoos are over at the men's prison. Right. So that's why you feel like all these women are pretty much lying on the case, and yeah, that I, don't is, like I mean, forced. it's consensual, and right. Well, I know a lot of them were consensual. Like I know, like I've had yeah. these girls come up to me and tell me that they were doing it. Well, I mean, I mean, it's crazy. It's 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 it means a lot that you guys are coming on here and saying that. You know, not that you guys really have any kind of dog in the fight. Not that you guys really care if the prison <clears throat> saves money or if those girls get paid money. Um, I think it's really controversial that you guys are sticking up for the Bureau of Prisons and the pri their correctional officers versus the women and saying that they're lying. Um, just the fact that you guys are exposing the truth, I think it's, uh, I think it's important. And I think yeah. it's, uh, it's admirable. The truth is the truth, and you guys are uh, exposing it for what it is. Exactly. That's what I think. What's right is right. Are there any other notable stories that you think would be interesting for people to hear? Let's tell them about the time we went hog hunting. Okay. In the camp at Coleman? Yeah. In the camp. Did they give you guys guns? Uh, yeah, no, like hunting we were with what? Go, no, no, that's like another charge. But uh, we were bored one day, and there, it's like, you're in, what is it? It used to be a wildlife sanctuary? Um, there's a conservation. It's like 200 and some acres of just, it's for um, gopher turtles and indigo snakes, but mm. there's a lot of, like, wildlife. There's hogs. Um, there's foxes. Coyotes. They used to have wild horses, but they had to get rid of them. Oh, really? No, for real, yeah. Why did they get rid of the horses? Because it's uh, what was like a lawsuit, like insurance. Like so somebody got hit by a horse. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm get serious. run over by a horse. Yeah, Damn. like they said it was uh, like an insurance thingy that they couldn't have the horses there, so they had to get rid of rid of the wild horses. Damn. So how did you guys how did you guys go hog hunting without a gun? So hogs are dangerous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're all right as long as you approach them from the rear. Well, what um, are you hunting them with? Um, they just grabbed them like we were you're just trying to, you're just trying to wrestle one yes. down. Yes, yeah, they were bored. Well, we were waiting to go. Where were we going? Media, maybe. I don't remember. We were going mowing somewhere, and we were waiting. We went. We were in the gator. Yeah, right. It was the gator. It was the gator, and we were in the gator, and I was in the middle. <laughs> I don't remember where I was at, but I remember I had hot coffee and it went everywhere. And then a spider came, and I was yelling because the spider was like it was like a big spider. And it was, like, on the gator while she's driving. And I felt like she was going to crash. And then they just hop out of the gator and catch these little piggies. <laughs> and the piggies are crying. The mama ran away somewhere. <laughs> so you're catching, like, the little the little, the little baby babies. hogs? Yeah. yeah. Did you catch one? They ca yeah. you caught one? What did you do with it? They like just go. let it go. I mean, oh. you can't really do anything with it. But like, it was, we can't take it. So it was just for the camp. sport. You can't bring so it in Catch and release? No. Yeah. <laughs> they tried to catch an armadillo one time. <sighs> Well, have we you ever tried to chase an armadillo? Yeah, no. I have tried to chase an armadillo. Help. <laughs> They're crazy. <laughs> they are well, crazy. my uncle has this driveway where there's like a there's like a like a sewer, a ditch sewer that goes like underneath the driveway. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he would chase it into one end of it and then he'd wait on the other end for it to come out and he had a pitchfork. And he pitchforks the armadillos <laughs> on the other side and then he like flings them into the woods. Oh you he's, didn't eat he's it? He's a crazy redneck. No, he just kills <laughs> it. Oh. Yeah. Um, remember this other time we go there's a uh, in the complex, there's a, ch what was it, not training center, um, where they shoot everything at? The shooting range. Oh, the shooting the range. course. Okay, so there's a shooting range there. And sometimes we'd be mowing, and they'd be having those little bombs on the floor, and they, like, what is it, inside of it, a pepper spray or something? It's CS gas is what it is. CS gas? And they just it's leave tear gas. They leave oh, everything so on okay. the floor. Yeah. So if you, like, <laughs> run over it, like, you're crying. No. Yeah. The thingy, but we used to go to the shooting range because there's no cameras. You, they really can't see you in there. And we used to have water fights there, the slip and slides. In um, the shooting range? In the shooting range, yeah. Oh my <laughs> there's, God. In, there's the big hill in the back. Yeah. You know, to catch the bullets. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they set up slip and slide and everything. Like, chicks are in their, their sports bras and, <laughs> and just slipping around. Slipping yeah. around, slip and sliding. Is this where the girls gone wild <laughs> scene comes in? It's just a is lot that what you guys were talking about? Girls gone wild. Not is only that, that, like we have parties for Halloween and uh, New, New Year's, Year's, 
And all the units go into one unit, and we have a multi-purpose room. And they all go into a multi-purpose room. Everybody's dressed up. Some are not even dressed up. <laughs> Where did you guys get your costumes? They make it. They make really? them. Yeah, like paper. <laughs> what were Sick. you guys? What was your costume? No, no we didn't dress up. <laughs> oh. So there was this one girl. She literally had a string because, you know, you could um, crochet in, in there. And a lot of girls made their uh, their own outfits. But um, this one girl had uh, two paper pumpkins <laughs> and uh, a string, and that was it. Like... Yeah. Another or the one. laundry bag. Do you yeah. know like a net laundry bag? Yeah. Like, like a mesh bag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she had that. Just just that. Just that on. Just that, yeah. Wow. And they go in a multi purpose room and we play music and they like dance. They give each other lap dances. They uh <laughs> The girls do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. So yeah. how many girls are in there at that, at like that 400. party? There's like 400. No, not everybody, because Pearl Camp has a lot of old people. Older, okay. yeah. A lot of old people. Probably about half. About, there's, it's packed. So it's like, like 100 or 200, 200 women yeah. in there yeah. partying. Just, yeah. How many girls would you say were like your guys' age? Like 20s? I was the youngest. You were well, the no, youngest? Yeah, I was the, Jocelyn was afterwards, but I was the youngest. Probably... Probably about half. It's, really? it's pretty evenly ranged. Like well, with it depends age. on what age. Like thirty through twenty, I want to say like probably like thirty girls. The rest are like in their forties. A little older. Yeah. Okay. Higher. Were any of the old women like walking around with pumpkins on their boobs without any kind of like scantily clad? I don't think so. <laughs> no, but what did happen was um, there was an older lady. She had been down for a long time. Which she one? had like life. I don't remember her Juanita. name. Juanita. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so so this girl, she's dancing and uh, stripping and they pull Juanita out and <laughs> set this chair up and set her in it. And this girl just like going she to town. She's a stripper dance. on the street. Oh, really? Yeah. Dancing on her and like <laughs> this chick... <laughs> She like licks her back. <laughs> Juanita <laughs> licked her back. Yeah, yes. it was serious. Like she's into it. Her. Was serious. Was there any like uh, drugs or alcohol ever? Yeah. So there? we were on lockdown when I first got there. I don't think you were there yet. We were on lockdown for fr- I want to say a month, maybe. I'm not gonna say forever. For like a month, but it felt like forever. Yeah. Because they found uh, I want to say a pound of meth in one of the warehouses. A pound of meth. Yeah. In, in there? the pallets. <clears throat> yeah, so and they don't know. It could have been an officer because I don't right. see an inmate doing it. Yeah, what would an inmate do with a pound of meth? Well, they were trying to get it to the men's inside and the sell men's. It oh. So, but, so it was in a pallet that we we either ones we we do the boxes that go into the men's prison. Mm-hmm. So it was like in one of the shipments, pretty much, and somebody found it and snitched it out. So an officer is not going to say they did it, right? Mm-hmm. Of course, but I'm pretty sure it was an officer Had because be. why would like we're not going to get paid for it, right? Like they are. What about like contraband? Was there like a lot of contraband going around in there where they're like, were like girls like trying to figure out how to like smuggle dildos into the prison? Or so I don't know about <laughs> dildos, but like everything's, everything's contraband. Earrings that they don't sell there is contraband. Panties are contraband. What else? Like really? anything, anything that they don't sell on commissary is contraband. Okay. So they, there was like, there's some girls, like I told you, they would um, sleep with officers for like earrings, <laughs> like those little $5 packets <laughs> that you buy at Claire's. Yeah. And then they would sell every individual earrings for $5. Mm-hmm. And then there were some <coughs> girls that they would get Suboxone and girls would buy Suboxone's. Um, what else? I know that. Candy. Stupid things like that, <laughs> like gummy candy, worms <laughs> that like, we don't get on commissary. They will get it from the officers. And big thing. Eyelashes were big. Yeah. Like uh, makeup. So is this some of the reason that is this part of the reason that some of the girls would sleep with the guards because they'd bring them presents like that, yep. like contraband? Well, they wow. they would sleep with them first and then slowly. <laughs> so the guard. Oh my things. god! So he's like bringing her gifts. Yeah. yeah. Like instead of flowers, yeah. you bring her some gummy worms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or we alcohol had one, or um, cigarettes. Cigarettes. We had one that was pretty young, and like I knew her, and we were close there. She's not in the lawsuit, and she was sleeping with officers uh, for like lobster. Lobster, she's <laughs> bringing lobster. Yeah. Yeah. Shrimp. She was walking around the that compound girl eating was it. Yeah, living. And like she, like she, everybody knew about it pretty much because this she, dude was going to Red Lobster, bringing <laughs> yeah, <an> admiral <laughs> feast. <laughs> Jeez. And she would just do it for that, and then she got her friend involved. Like a girl came on a compound. She thought the girl was pretty, and she told her, "Hey, this is what I'm doing." I think you're pretty. You want to come join me? And that's when the threesomes came involved. And then they were both getting things. And then other girls would get jealous and snitch them out. And snitch on them. Yeah. And then they got shipped because they were doing it. They're not in a lawsuit, though. But we knew they were doing it. Wow. That's crazy. It's so insane because you think that any any normal person without any kind of knowledge of what you guys are talking about that would see that article, they're like, oh, my God, we knew those girls get raped in prison. Right, that's yeah. so yeah. fucked up. 
You know but what I mean? Like you you, camp, you would just you yeah, would just exactly. assume that that girls are getting taken advantage of someone who didn't know what it was mm-hmm. actually like. Right. So it's crazy to hear these stories from you guys. Yeah. And there's a lot of girls that know it's a lie. Like when I posted it on my Facebook, a lot of people were like, "Oh my God, poor girls." And then me and a couple of girls that were in Coleman were like, "No, like no poor girls. Like they knew what they're doing. Yeah. Poor guys. Like right. <laughs> Some of them. And there was a lot of girls that were in Coleman that know it's a lie. <sighs> That's heavy. Did you guys ever get caught with any contraband or anything? Um, we had a lot of drops. Like um, I told you that I had, uh, well, I didn't tell you guys. Um, I had a cell phone when I was in prison. I had it for a long time. I had it from November to July. And I felt like that's why D. Camilla, he was an investigator. I felt like that's why he was following us. I didn't know at first it was because Demiro was sleeping with an officer. I felt like he was following us because he knew we had phones. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to get the phones. Um, and... So we got rid of, well, we didn't get rid of them. What happened was we buried them and we forgot where we buried them at. <laughs> <laughs> they could not find them. We couldn't like, find it. We tore up the woods so bad. Like if you walked back there, it looked like animals were there. Like there was holes everywhere. <laughs> Have you ever seen that movie Holes? <laughs> oh yeah. That's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what it was like. Spent two weeks digging, digging. Trying to find the phones. We could not find it. So it's like a all. free for all. I mean, it wouldn't be hard to like just go outside and call somebody, right? Like it's pretty mm-hmm. easy to hide a phone. Or you could just be in your room and call somebody. Really? Yeah. yeah. So the <laughs> most thing you have to worry about is somebody, like your neighbor or somebody like an snitching iPhone? you out. Or are we talking like a Nokia brick phone? No, it's no, not like, I had like, like a phone. A touch, yeah. Like a smartphone. Yeah. yeah. Really? Where do you get Instagram, the phone? Instagram, people drop Drops. them. Drops. And then like, you pick them just up. Somebody. When they come visit you, um, and because we worked landscape outside facilities, like, you know, it's just free range. You go on the road and they drop it, you pick it up. Oh, so they just toss it somewhere yeah. in the grass or something mm-hmm. and... Who and tosses it? it? The people? Visitors like, and stuff? Ask. Mm-hmm. Oh, like people that you guys know that would come visit yeah. you. Right. Oh, I got it. I got it. Wow. Yeah, I had a... I heard that drones would drop shit in sometimes in, into prisons. I no? don't know. Not in ours. Maybe oh. like a fenced-in prison, like yeah. the oh, men. That high-tiff. would make sense. Yeah. Too much work for what you guys were doing. It was too easy to just. <laughs> yeah. Like, you could actually even meet somebody and just be like, here, you know. So Literally, like I remember one time we were driving and uh, we saw this car and we know like everybody that... Not people that work there, but the cars that were that are allowed to be driving around are all white. Okay. Every single one of them are white, and they have a number M something like M four, M twenty seven. They're all tagged. Well, we saw like this golden van, and he was probably dropping something off for somebody. But we followed him all the way. Like he was walking around there. We followed him, and he didn't drop nothing off. I'm pretty sure he ended up dropping something because those girls in the articles took it, and then somebody else snitched on them. Not about taking the the drop, but that they're taking with the officers because they got mad that their drop got took. So there's no fences at this place. You could just, like, drive by. In the camp, there's no fences. Like, yeah. the penitentiary's fenced in, the medium's mm-hmm. fenced in, and the lowest fenced in. Everything else, you can just drive. And it's open complex. You can just drive inside of it. Well, that's crazy. And people live there. On There's a little boy that rides his bike. <laughs> like, what, yeah. lives yeah. on the... He lives on the complex. On, yeah. He drives his bike. We used to drive right, right next to him. What, do you have, like, a house? There's a house there's that houses, all There's houses everywhere. Cars, there's little kids play outside. There's, like, mm-hmm. little, um, like, play sets. On the complex, like mm. right next to like the penitentiary, actually. Yeah, they bought right up all the, the houses on the property and like they turned them into like the mail house or safety house, safety house, sort house, um, haunted house. They turned one of the houses into a haunted house for the staff and their kids. And if you go in there, it's like actually like a haunted house. I remember we went in there one time. We're not allowed in there, but we went in there. Yeah. And <laughs> I was scared because the floor shakes and everything. It's like there's like clowns in the. T- in the so it's like a real deal. Yeah. House. She's scary though. <laughs> So girls would just like, even though it was so <laughs> wide open, you could easily just walk off and just disappear. Yeah. So and you don't. What Same. would keep the girls from staying in and not running, just leaving? And and why? Added, why? Why risk it? Added yeah. five years to your sentence. It's just not like, more. Right. It's, like it's, it's not that bad there. It's really not. Yeah. So you might as well just do the time and get it get exactly. get it behind you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What you about could. the guys part of the camp? That's there too. They don't the have a camp, camp at Coleman. Oh, no. They have a low. And okay. they can go outside to like wreck, but they're still fenced in. Right, it's nothing like where so you, you guys could see them like when you're outside. Yes. Yeah. Really, like we used to mow, and, and they would they would, they would cat there. call you and talk to you. Yeah, but see the perimeter; they have perimeters there, and if you got caught talking to them, you get in trouble. Yeah, mm. yeah. But they have perimeters. Like a lot of them will talk to us from there. Um, but usually they they're they weren't like to lined you. up pulling their pants down. So, so they <laughs> hey like, girl, when, they go, <laughs> when you go inside, because it's like it's like the complex, and then. It's fenced. Well, then there's a no man's land where the inmates can't go into. So we have to go inside and mow it. But there's another fence for where they're at, like their mm-hmm. wreck and stuff. Mm-hmm. When we're in there mowing, you can see their multi. Like literally, if I'm on the weed eater, 
I can look up and there'll be like a guy right here. And all that's blocking us is the wall and the window. And he can talk to you. So they'll be lined up in the multi and it's all glass windows. The multi is basically like a big room where they have like computers. The computers and everybody and just kind of hangs out. A lot of tables. Mm -hmm. where, you know, and they'll all be there lined up with signs and with their <laughs> penis out. It's like, I would be embarrassed if I was a guy because like everybody has it out. Right. And they're just all talking to you. They're, they're all just next to each other with yes. their dicks out. Yeah. <laughs> they're telling you to bounce on the mower. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh what are the signs? They're say? literally like. To call them. <laughs> um, to write them. Oh, like call me or write yeah. numbers. Yeah. It made numbers. A lot of them just want to talk to you. So They're you like barbarians, dude. <laughs> it's bad. Just like literal like baboons. Yeah. I had a, a friend that she used to uh, go in there and do things on purpose. Like she would suck her thumb. Like, oh, <laughs> just to like tease just them? Just like, yeah. them yeah. Oh them. my Right in front of them. She'll suck her thumb. She'll play with her boobs. She will uh, like bounce extra. Like because you're already bouncing on the mower. Yeah. yeah. But she would like bounce extra. That's she, fucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, those guys are probably loving it. They oh, are. Yeah, you know they were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what is the most fucked up thing either of you guys saw the whole time you were in there? Like the one thing that's just like you cannot unsee that. I feel like you got something, Jesse. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just there was these two girls. <coughs> and I mean, it's, it's not like unusual to see two girls going at it. But <laughs> the two girls that it was, like these very large... <laughs> Oh very God! Large girls and they were just going to town. It was bad. It was what were they bad. doing? They were having sex. <laughs> like what? Like scissoring each other? <laughs> I don't even know. There was so much going on. Like, <laughs> like it was just so much skin <laughs> everywhere. Oh my! It was God. so bad. And where are they doing that at? In, In their, their room? bunk? Yes. Yeah. You just so walk bad. by and you see it going yeah. down. Yeah, you usually see that a lot. And I think that's pretty too. And they yeah. they consider lots that of le lots of lesbians in there. Yeah. And they, well, not a lot, actually. Not even that they're lesbian. They're just doing it because they're inside, right? right. A lot of girls are gay just for the stay. Gay for the stay. stay. Yeah. For the yeah. stay. Mm -hmm. Like, gay I know this day. girl. She's still in prison. She got shipped. She was only with her girlfriend because her girlfriend had money and would buy her a commissary. Right. And Put she money in the books and yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. And she would, like, send money to her family and everything. Really? <laughs> then we have officers. Uh, some of them are not listed in there. But he would buy, like, McDonald's for the girls. <laughs> um, coffee in the morning. Uh, it's the little things in life. Yeah, like but the thing <laughs> is, like, we don't have that every day. So, like, a lot of girls take advantage of it. But if like an officer will bring you coffee that you don't have inside, like, right. you kind of like you want more, and like you like I don't know. It's like I never did anything for, with an officer, and I feel like I didn't have to because I had officers buy me things all the time, and I didn't do anything with them. Like I know I used to. So you were the exception. <laughs> not that like I was the <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was that unicorn and I was the. <laughs> distribution manager at unicorn so i had to oversee the whole warehouse so like if they asked me to do something like if it, they need a report like right there and then like i want you to bring me in arizona like a mucho mango arizona <laughs> and then i'll do it for you and then they'll bring it to me my bosses knew i had a phone and they didn't snitch on me um what really else? Yeah. yeah like a lot of them like i grew bonds with my <laughs> bosses and, like it kind of sucks because like you don't really like you kind of <laughs> became friends with them yeah and it sucks because like you really can like talk to them on the outside because when you leave yeah yeah at least not for like I think do you miss any year. of them do you miss them yeah really yeah I do. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i miss my old bosses um one of them went to i don't know where he went he went to a different one he was only in the female prisons for like a year and he said he hated it he'd rather work with juveniles and he says they're the worst they throw shit at you yeah. they like literally shit juveniles <laughs> yes. yeah yeah he says they were the worst, but he rather work there because he said that he knows what what working with women's consists of. Like he knows that a girl can say, "Hey, he did this," and that's it. He's done. Yeah. So he didn't want to be there. Right. Too much risk. Yeah. That like he didn't want to be there at all. I got really close to him. Um, when I had my phone, I was I got on Facebook one time and put "Merry Christmas," and he was on my Facebook for some reason. I don't know why. And he told me to delete it because he's seen it and he knew I had a phone, and I did. But. They were either your buddy or they knew that you uh, knew something that would uh, compromise them. Yeah. So yeah. They had to be care. nice. Yeah. They wow. either like really cared about you or they knew that if I get you fired or if I tell on you, you're going to take me down type yeah. thing. God, that's crazy. Yeah. It's almost like, yeah, like you always got a, tar like you always got a target on your back if you're you a do. correctional officer at the women's prison because like if you, any of them get pissed at you, they can just make up a story and get you axed but not only like an officer like like i told you i was the manager there and there's two girls they didn't like me at all and it's because they wanted my job 
and uh, which I don't like. I don't care about. It's a prison job. We got paid thirteen cents an hour. Like I don't. I don't care about that. Um, but they wanted it, and uh, so she said that she was gonna send me to county, and we all know what that means. She was gonna say that I have to be one officer, and she, she did. Was gonna say what? That I have to be one officer. Okay. To get me sent to county, and she did, and I got sent to uh, the Camilla, and he asked me, and I told him no because I really wasn't, and then that was it. But like. If he wanted to, he could have took me to county, and I could have got shipped just because of something that somebody else said. Oh, yeah, that happens. All I, the time. I got sent to county for 40 days over mm -hmm. this. Yeah, they just say yeah. it. They, say, like, they can say you've seen it <coughs> or that they've seen you do it, and you're going to county. And that's it. Like, no questions asked until you get to county. Are there a lot of female correctional officers in there in the women's side? Yeah. No, well, it's about even. I we think have evenly. Cologne. I feel like the female officers have got to be bitches. Some of them are. Some of them are. Some of them are not. Like, we had one. She was a coke head. Like, she did coke, like, <laughs> bad, bad. And she picked and chose who she wanted. Like, you can't go to other units. So I would, I lived in F3, and they lived in F2. So if I wanted to go F2, I had to go out of bounds, and I can get in trouble. Mm. So it all depends with the officers. Like, I thought when she caught me, that's it. Like, I was going to get a shot. But she didn't. Like, she just said, um, I know you're not from this unit, so you owe me one, basically. That's what she told me. What does that mean? Like, if she wants to, she <coughs> wants me to do something, I got to do it for her afterwards, right, basically. Her it might be something stupid. Like, it might yeah. be, like, like help her take another inmate down or, oh, okay. like, do, like, extra work for her. Like, Duty. do something, like, stupid. Yeah. Too mucho mangoes. <laughs> 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 but it would be, like, stuff like that. And then we had some officers that didn't care if you went yeah. out of bounds. Yeah. Like, on the Christmas party, was it Christmas, New Year's party? The officer came upstairs and straight up told us that he didn't care. He knew we were all out of bounds. He just uh, <laughs> wanted us to stay inside so the cameras didn't off see camera. us. Off camera. He said stay off camera, so that's it. I don't, can't see them being assholes. We had some. Really? We had, uh, well, like, trying to, like, like trying to assert their dominance or authority they in, like, do. a female. Really? Yeah, Mr. Some Simmons, of them. the white one, was that him? I was scared of him. And I was only scared because I had a phone. And he was so <laughs> sneaky. Like he was so, like he wanted to catch somebody to do something. He would hold his keys. Because mm -hmm. when they would walk, their keys dangle. So you can hear them coming. Um, so he would hold his keys so you can't hear him. And he would like look over. Like he would go in somebody else's cubicle and look we'll over the wall the to see what you were doing. Like he was creepy. He was creepy. What about Phillips? Phelps. No, Phelps. Phelps. He uh, walked. If you, we can't like wash our clothes by hands and dry them. So if you were like washing your panties, he will walk in your room and grab your panties with a pencil and walk around the whole unit with them during count. <laughs> yeah. I swear. He just was creepy. to like embarrass you or? No, just because he was weird. Just to be weird. Like if somebody would, if he was in there, I would have believed it because he was weird. Yeah. He was wow. super weird. creepy. But the women push him out. Like, yeah, they know what to say. They get you out. They know. To get the officer the out officer of there. Out. If they don't like you, like, you're not going to last. Like, the mean ones don't last because they write cop-outs. <laughs> I'm serious. Really? They write, like, papers, and then they send it to, like, the warden and, like, the higher authorities lying. And they get like, them out oh, of there. Wow. Yeah. So the women really do run the prison. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. That's wild. Pretty much. There's, like, yeah, uh, the girl officers don't even like being with us. Like, nobody likes – I feel like their worst part – of the day is working at the camp nobody likes working at the camp no no they don't they hate it but even if it was all women like you still have that issue too because there was female guards ha having relationships too yeah with the women gay female yes. officers having relationship with females really yeah are there any women are they, uh, yeah are there in, any in that case no 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 seven there's male one, officers. seven men yeah yeah <coughs> seven there was uh, my old bunkie she was in a relationship <laughs> with a female there really mm-hmm and I knew about it. Like, I used to buy, when she left, I would buy her uh, girlfriend, like, candies and shit from the commissary. I don't know why, because she can get it herself. She's an officer. But I used to do it. Are you guys it. allowed to stay in touch, or do you stay in touch with anybody that's in We're really prison? not allowed to stay in touch. You're not allowed I, to because you're on probation yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But, um, but you would, though, because you made some friends. Yeah, I made some pretty good friends. And, like, my case, like, I've asked my probation officer. Mm -hmm. to talk to a lot of the girls mm -hmm. so i'm sure it helps them too like i'm sure like giving them some sort of like inspiration for when they get out or keeping in touch with yeah. them really helps them yeah just that support yeah definitely goes a long way in there yeah because like in there like we really didn't have anybody besides each other mm -hmm. like in there so it's kind of like how can you like lose that bond yeah, yeah. for sure I don't have the videos on my phone, but I used to have videos of uh, <laughs> when I had my phone of the the, the camp. I used to take videos of like the girls on the gators. Oh, and we'll go you mean when you were in there, you were videoing yeah. with the phones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you could have started like your own YouTube channel. I like, could have. Oh but I probably God, got that's so funny. <laughs> hey guys, it's Dulce. <laughs> <laughs> Just on the gator hog hunting today. 
right? <laughs> um, but they made we made trails in there. Cut and trails. Um, we used to go in the gators and like I will videotape. I'm in a truck listening to music and somebody else is driving and I'll videotape the girls on the trails like just going through the woods and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Then uh one of the trails led you to like this big old field of nothing and the girls used to go there and smoke cigarettes. And oh, really? I got all that on video too. Um <laughs> What else? It's not because I like I wasn't doing it to like be vindictive or anything. No, just I thought it was fun. cool, and I was showing my family like, look, this is what this <laughs> is. Don't bad. worry, this is where I'm at. We're good. Yeah. You're sending yeah. your family videos of you guys, yeah, fucking around on the gators. Yeah, that's and then hilarious. We were cutting wood and stuff. I remember one time um, cutting wood. Yeah, we had to split we wood. Split wood. Oh for shit! The men's. Wood splitters. Um, one time we were there, and I had like this really bad. We were at the wood tent, and this is where we used to bury our phones at. This is why we lost the phones because we had to switch. The location um we were there and i had a bad feeling so i kept telling the girls to sleep so we buried the phones inside the dirt and it wasn't really covered if you would have kicked it you could have found the bag um and when we had left we left we told our boss because he knew we had them mm-hmm. we came back we told him that we we're gonna go cut um grass mm-hmm. so we get on our mowers and as soon as i go down the road the wood tent is like over here and i see like canines and de camilla everybody's at the wood tent looking for something they brought canines and I'm pretty sure they're looking for drugs because the canine right. was there. Right. But, like, they didn't find nothing. They didn't even find cigarette butts. And, like, that's everywhere at the wood tent. Because that's what they did was smoke cigarettes. Um, and later we missed them by, like, a minute. Like, w- they would have pulled up to us on our phones. Damn, oh, man. And what would have happened if they would have pulled up and yeah. you guys were doing that? We probably would have gotten in trouble. Uh, no, we would have gotten in trouble. Like, a lot of trouble. <laughs> We probably yeah. would have, like, county. It depends. Because county county they jail. can yeah. if they want to. Swift. They can charge. It depends what kind of officer it was, right? No, no, no. Dickman is sending the county. Yeah. He's, oh. sent, he's yeah. head of okay. uh, SIS, so he's okay. definitely yeah. yeah you're in but it depends. Like they can, you can just lose good days, or you can get a whole new charge for mm. the for the contraband. Mm. It depends on what they want to do. Damn. Yeah, but then like uh, one of the girls on the thingy, she her co-defendants in the medium. One of the girls on the lawsuit. Yeah, her co-defendant is in the medium, and um, they've had bags like bags like big pounds of bags of tobacco dropped off. Um, buried in the woods it's probably still there because she was too chicken to bring it inside the medium um and they were supposed to throw it over the fence for the guys to get it it was tobacco it was uh suboxins cigarettes they had officers that they knew um that are not in there uh that they would sleep with bring cigarette packets to their boyfriends or their friends in the medium and the low (laughs) yeah damn it's like that that's heavy. And that's what, like, I'm saying, like, they pick and choose. Like, they sleep they sleep with these officers and everything's okay. But once they get mad, they want to do the lawsuit. Right. Because the same girls are sleeping with so much more officers. And one of them wasn't even sleeping with them at all. She just said she was. So what do you think happens to this lawsuit and these girls and stuff? Do you think they, do they get anything out of it? I feel like it? they're going to get something, but I feel like they shouldn't. <clears throat> like, they really shouldn't. Yeah, either way, they're going to get something because... Yeah. yeah, definitely. Because those officers broke the law by... Yeah. by by engaging in that relationship with those girls in the first yeah. place. But not all of them were in it. Like, uh, the girl Kara, <laughs> she never slept with those officers yeah. at all. She wasn't forced to. Like, we, we were in landscaping together. Really? And they didn't like her. Like, I know because I was cool with the bosses. They mm-hmm. did not like her. And then she said something in her statement. She said that one of the, that Van tried to sleep with her. That who did? Van. Was that. our boss at landscape. Okay. She said that he tried to sleep with her. Okay. And um, she said it in there. And that... She got she got fired because Clater and Phillips no Van and Phillips I thought no she said that she got fired because Phillips and Clater tried to force her to sleep with Van oh. and that she got fired because she wouldn't Van and Phillips don't even like each other so why would Phillips be helping Van mm. why would he be forcing her to sleep with Van if they don't like each right. other so it's like that made no sense like they despise each other they they don't even speak to each other when they pass each other so they don't like each other at all and then like Kara she would uh we'll be in a car with Van. I remember one time the bat wing got so stuck. Who is Van? One of the guys in the... One of the correctional officers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. He was our boss on Okay. Um, one time the bat wing got stuck in a, in a sinkhole. We have sinkholes in there. What's the bat wing? Tractor. Okay. Mo- and mower. Okay. Um, we got stuck in a sinkhole, so we had to get the... Is it called the cat? Or is it called the cat? Mm, a front end loader. We had to get that to pull it out. So we had to have Van there because we're way off... Like, we're out of bounds, like, completely yeah. out of bounds. <laughs> so we had to get him to help us pull it. Um, and she was in, he was in the car, and I was in there, and two other girls were in there. And, like, she's, like, straight up making comments, like, like how how good she can give him head and how, like, making comments, like, throwing herself at him. Really? Yes. Like, in front of all of us, she didn't care. She was laughing off, thinking it was cute. And he's looking at her, like, 
like she was disgusting <laughs> and then she's gonna say that that and it didn't happen like she threw herself at him so many times how old is this girl she's like 32 30, 30, maybe, 30 yeah, 32 maybe and how old is this, this guy van <laughs> like 50 <laughs> he's just like 40 something he, he looks he looks I don't know, older he's, than he is he had to retire like he was at the retiring point he only had a year left really yeah. so he was an older dude yeah and he was still just like ew lady like stop yeah because she was like way coming on to him like way like she was like making it known that she wanted to be with him which is probably why she said what she said in the lawsuit because right. she, he didn't you think she's kind of like resentful that yes. none of the prison yeah. guards wanted any wanted her yeah like Absolutely. she was she was really skinny and she like she came on to them like she got kicked out of tallahassee she got shipped in tallahassee because she had a relationship with a lieutenant and like she told me like it was a full-blown relationship she was in contact with him everything afterwards and then she came to Coleman where everybody's doing it so she wanted to do it to get things <laughs> so but like nobody did it i think maybe she had a relationship. so she's pissed yeah well she was mad because she got fired because mm. working at landscaping you have more privilege you can go more places mm -hmm. and so she used to go to the medium and mo the same, same boyfriend the same piece of grass every day like that grass was dead like it was like <laughs> dead dead <laughs> she's just mowing it every day she's just yeah. mowing it every day the same spot like that's so obvious just to see her boyfriend that was in there like yeah. i think he has like life or something yeah i think he does but so she, when she got fired that's when she did that like she wanted revenge because she got fired because now she can't see her boyfriend anymore god that's such a fucked up situation yeah and i think that she even said because she's due to get out soon right yeah that if she can't get a time cut she wants it for she him. wants it for her her boyfriend that has life yeah. in the medium over this lawsuit. So wait, they can get <clears throat> in an exchange instead of getting money from the settlement, they can get time, time cut. cut yep. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't yeah. see that in the article. And she wants to give the time cut to her boyfriend. Right. Yeah, I doubt they're gonna do that. They're right. not they're gonna not. do that. They don't do stuff like no. that. No, <clears throat> but uh, she wanted to. That's what she was doing it. And then I had Amanda a couple of days before I left. She had told me that she was gonna bring them down. She said she was gonna bring Van down, Phillips down, Clear down, everybody down. Because she was mad that she got fired. She got fired, yeah. And she was mar fired because they messed up a more. Like they ran over like some. They ran over something, mm. and uh, the paint got everywhere, and the tire was messed up, and it was just bad. And they knew, like, like the head boss, not Van, but, like, the head head boss yeah. knew that she was picking up drops, what that was she was on? planning right. to bring it to the medium, that she had a phone. Like, they knew she wasn't really working, that she was yeah. just there for the extra privilege. So she got mad that she got fired. And she did it. <laughs> then the whole, like, I'm surprised, like, Officer Lieutenant Gonzalez, he's a lieutenant at the penitentiary. I'm surprised he's in there because, like, when I left, they were good. Like, we used to meet him to get pastries mm -hmm. down the road and she used to like she wanted she volunteered to work at the penitentiary so she could be with him because he didn't work at the camp so i'm surprised that he was even involved in the lawsuit and her friend rebecca she's in there um rebecca he used to give rebecca information about her when she because amanda went to county over it so when she was in county he's lieutenant he knows mm -hmm. so he will come get rebecca in the morning and tell her information about amanda because like he knew so I'm surprised they even threw him under the bus. That's insane. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these, a lot of these officers are completely innocent. Is what you're saying? They're not completely innocent because they did have sex. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, so all of them did. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, got you. All of them did. Which I don't know if all, well, the majority of them did, Most but not did. to all the females. Like I doubt. Yeah. Like if you were to see some of the girls <laughs> in that <laughs> you'd be in like, the lawsuit, hell no. yes. If you were to see them, you'll be like. No, no way. No. If you're going to take it if from somebody, if you're going to throw them down and take it, it's going to be somebody that, you know, is appealing, right? Right, yeah. right the cream of the crop. Right. Like, you're not, like, like, Ursini, she's, like, her stomach touches the floor. <laughs> and she's in the lawsuit? <laughs> yes. yes. And she told us straight up that she, like, she was over being in prison. She was in there for forever. Not really forever. I think she was, like, seven years. She had five years, and somehow she got re-indicted, like, while she was in prison. I, I don't, mm. I've never even heard of that, but she ended up with, I think, 15 years total. But she yeah. was a liar, so I don't know. She probably had 15 Big years time. to begin with. Right. She said money, she had money is overseas, which was a lie. Mm. She had all these thingies. She was a mortgage broker there for fraud. And she was I also a million lawyer. Dollar. No, she said she was a lawyer. I'm saying she was also a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> A lawyer. Yep. She was a lawyer and a mortgage broker <laughs> yeah. that was yeah. in there for fraud. Yeah. And she used to do people's, which is, uh, like, that's like a crime itself. Which she used, like, she you used can't to, uh, run a business in, in prison. prison. She used to uh, do people's paperwork. Yeah. And Files do, like, appeals and stuff. Yeah. And they would all get denied. But she was still, and she would charge them, yep. like, hundreds of dollars uh -huh. to do it. And they'll all come back denied. Mm. Every oh single one of them, because she's God. not a real lawyer. But, like, I doubt an officer touched her, and she said it. Um, who else was it? Maggie? Maggie Leon. I don't 
don't think so either. I don't think that. Ever what was up with, what's up with Maggie? It's just the way she. Oh, speaking of Maggie, is she actually so there was the, she worked in um, welding. She was the wasn't she the, the tool room clerk yeah, in welding. So there was another girl that worked in welding, and um, she found a book where Maggie had written in it, and it said. Uh, it was, it was like comments that she was going to say uh, about the officer, what they did. And it's like, it was basically notes what she was going to say in this lawsuit. The story she was yes. going to give. Yeah. And so what, somebody found the book? Yes. And, when, they, and then what? when the word got out that she found it, she got like punished? No, nothing happened to her. Who? They thought the girl was lying. Yeah. That found the notebook is what happened. So nothing ever happened. But it was like it sounds crazy there. It is crazy. Is this notebook? Like evidence in the lawsuit at all? Are they using it? No, you know? I doubt it. They, th- they thought the girl was lying about it. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure Maggie got rid of it after that. Well, somebody got rid of it. Yeah, yeah. So. definitely. And there was another girl. She's out already. She was looking for a way out. Her daughter like was sick. Um, I doubt she's up with any in- officer. She probably said it at the time because she wanted time cut. She ended up getting time cut afterwards, but I don't think she got a uh, compassionate release because yeah. her daughter was sick. Trump let her out. Yeah. Trump let her out. Yeah. yeah. Really. Mm-hmm. Wow. At least she had like a couple months with her daughter before she died. Yeah, that was nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of legit businesses, <laughs> do you remember when you guys like that girl that did the massages? One Tooth Wonder. <laughs> what was it, Natasha? <laughs> Natasha, One Tooth Wonder. So <laughs> I think it was my birthday or something. And uh, they gave me a, a voucher for a free massage. She did vaginal massages. wall massages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never turned it in. <laughs> no. Yeah. She did. Saving it for a rainy day. No. <laughs> <laughs> Take a rain check on the vaginal wall massage. It's because like we did it like kind of like it was a gag gift. It was like, a we gag. We knew if you've seen this chick, like literally she has one tooth, like oh. <laughs> and, like, like <laughs> but she really did do these massages. She, did she really? Yeah. And yes. people people took them yeah. up, took her up on them? Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds nuts. It really yeah. does. It sounds it sounds so like way, a free for all. It, yeah, it sounds like a free for all. Like <laughs> way gnarlier even in like gnarlier than the Orange is the New Black show. It definitely is orange. Is the, it, they don't have nothing on Coleman. <laughs> really? <laughs> nothing on Coleman. <laughs> nah, I don't, I Coleman don't needs care. its own show. It really does. Damn, we gotta smuggle a uh, we gotta get smuggle a video camera in there. Let them start like turning. Like, it won't be hard. Producing <laughs> yeah. a show in there. <laughs> it won't. Like the other day, I was on Facebook and I saw the same thing I used to do. So that's how I knew. But there was this girl, and she was taking pictures inside her cubicle on her bunk with the sheet up. I'm like, bro, you're so retarded. Like, you're going to get caught. Like, officers check our Facebook. Like, do they really? Yes. Yeah. Like, I told you, you checked my status. I didn't post pictures of me yeah. in prison. I do now because I'm gone. <clears throat> so, like, if I'm bored, like, I'll post a picture, like, when I was in prison. And the other prisoners know that I had a phone now. But they didn't know who right then. Right then, yeah. But she posted a picture in her bunk, like, in her cubicle. Like, you could wearing totally her grays. Right, While in her she's grays. Still in there. You yes. can see the brick wall with the bunk beds and, like. With her little flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> like you can light. tell, yeah, the book light and yeah. her sheets up. Like you can see it in the picture. <laughs> oh my god, it's crazy. Are you guys worried about like any of these girls, like coming after you or anything no. for speaking out them. against them? Or I wrote Amanda on Facebook because <clears throat> you I wrote about this. No, I didn't tell her I was doing oh. this. I called her a liar. I told her she was a liar, and if her baby daddy and her her co defendant knew that, like basically, like she was like a snitch, and she blocked me. She blocked you on Facebook? Yeah. She blocked me. So then I wrote her from fake Facebook, too. And she still blocked me. But I'm she not knows. worried about it. Because, I mean, like I said, the truth is the truth. And right. What, do you, what can you do? Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, and it's not only us. Like, I had a girl that said, basically, like, she posted the article, too. And she said that if the feds were to come and get her, to for her to testify on their behalf, she would like she really? would go, yeah, she would go and say like your honor, like these girls are lying. Like what I'm the, here. What if the feds came to you guys and asked you guys to testify on their behalf? Would you? Like I would say they're yeah. lying. Yeah, I would say they're lying. Really? They are lying. I don't feel like they should get money because it's a lie. Mm. I mean, they did have sex, right. but the whole like that's but being raped. The right. whole right. like I'm fear of <clears throat> being trapped. I'm fear of corners. I'm scared of being alone. Like all that is a lie. Right. They play it up to the yeah. fullest. They're making like more mental trauma so they right. can get more money. Yeah. They're making it. They're making a way crazier story out yeah. of it, making it seem like it was something that was not. Right. Well, damn. Yeah, maybe we'll have to touch base when the case is over or something, Definitely. and see how that turns out. Yeah, for sure. How long does that 
like go on for you think or i don't know don't know Mine how long has it been going for yeah how long when did it start you know did it start when the article was posted or um i think before. that it came <laughs> out when the art like you know that's when it, but um no before that because it was this was going on when i was still locked up and that was months ago yeah almost a year ago yeah. wow so i'm sure this stuff could go on for years right i'm sure that whole yeah. process takes a long yeah. time yeah. i'm pretty sure well, thank you guys for doing that. Thank you guys for coming on here and and uh, telling your stories and and exposing the truth to the uh, this whole fiasco that's going on inside the prison camps with the rape scandals. And let's do a part two eventually. When yeah. this thing when this thing wraps up, let's let's follow back up. Definitely. Cool. Thanks for yeah. coming. Thanks, girls. Good night, everybody. Yeah.